Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. The things of the Spirit are good. When you get it down, you, go, you start realizing, God isn't telling me not to do that because he's, he's mad at me. He's telling me not to do that so that I can start to experience life without the drama and the trauma and the pain. The scripture says you can't serve mammon and God, riches and, and, and the Lord. You have to choose one or the other. You have to choose which one will you cling to. And I say, do what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 6, if you seek God's kingdom first, his righteousness, how many things will be added to you? All things. Whatever you need will be added to you. But see, that's spiritual words with spiritual thoughts, right? If you seek God, does God look out for us? He says, look at the birds of the air. You're worried about how you're going to make it. He says, they don't sow, they don't reap, they don't put into barns, and yet your Father in heaven feeds them every day. And not one of them falls to the ground without his concern. He knows every single one of them. And he looks after them. And then Jesus says, how much more value are you to your heavenly Father than the birds. We are so valuable to God. If we, just, if we just could perceive that, we wouldn't be stressing out about nothing. We'd be like, it's okay. I'm worth more than a bird. <laughs> and, God, and God's got me. He's got me covered. He's going to take, I'm going to seek him. And see, I know that this is not natural wisdom what i'm telling you right now so some of people are going to go i don't get this but some of you are are really getting your spirit fed with what it needs to hear today because when we are willing to do it his way and say okay lord i'll seek you first and let you add what i need then he can do things beyond what you know our little finite minds can figure out he can work out things for our lives that people just will stand back and look at it in, in, in retrospect and go, how did you get blessed with that? I, I'm going to share this one because this is the one I'm just about to celebrate with my wife going to Alaska for, for our 31st anniversary. Is Some of the guys, well, how did you get her? I'm going to share with you how I, because this is one, you know, I want my son to get this, the right model for him. I got the right model. Okay, but how I got the right model, I, I, no, not luck. I had bad luck in picking girls. Let, let me tell you, I had, I had had my high school sweetheart look like for sure we're going to be married till I'm just getting ready to graduate a year before her. We, we, we were supposed to graduate together, but I was finishing early. And her dad sent her off on a cruise. And we were both, she, she was so attracted to me because she was this Christian model that was, um, well, the world would say prudent. She wasn't floozy. She wasn't, she wasn't easy. She, she was like, look, um, you know, I'm very attracted to you, but we got to wait till we're married. And I was thinking, wow, old-fashioned manners, you know. And this girl, and she go, it's because God says that this is how we're supposed to live. And I was thinking, there must really be, I mean, I, I believe in a God, but, you know, not like to, like, practical, like, down. I mean, you're really going to change how you live? And I know that sounds funny, but when you're raised Italian Roman Catholic, you live how you want to live. You go tell the priest you're sorry at the end of the week. He goes, talks to God. You give a little extra money. He tells you if you do a few prayers of penance and everything's good. She was like raised in a different church, a Methodist church, where they believed you do it the right method and then you get blessed. And so she didn't want to sleep together before marriage. And so I was like, good, uh, I guess. Not really, but everyone else saying, you're supposed to do this. How do you buy the car without a test drive? All these lines I learned from the world. This is not, I, well, and then... Her dad treats her to this cruise at, uh, at the end of our junior year. I gra I'm done, and she's got one more year to go, and she comes back from the cruise and says, I'm not going to be a Christian anymore. And I'm like, what? I had just become a Christian. 
Like literally just gave my life to the Lord just a few months. I'm like, uh, uh, you know, I just read it says you got to have Christian with a Christian. And if you're going to go unchristian, I, I already became one. And now I, I'm not going to go on Christian. That doesn't work for me, you know. And, and, and I'm like, what is wrong? And she had, she had been seduced on the cruise by a Frenchman. And I'm like, what? I date you for three years. You won't go to bed with me. And you go to bed with some stranger. That's it. It's over. Then I go off to Bible school. I meet another girl. It gets real serious. We're both, we got to do this right. And then she calls up and says, I'm not going to serve the Lord anymore. I'm like, two for two. I mean, I'm two for two. Two serious. Like, I thought, this is it. This is the right one. I'm like, God, my picker is broken. I give up. I get, Forget it. I'm not even going to look anymore. Because, I mean, I had lots of candidates in my mind of potential. You know, guys, we always keep a running list. Okay, if girls, sorry, if you don't know this, we're not trying to offend you, but... You know, before we're married, we're looking at our options. And we keep this little mental list of, some guys actually write it out. Okay, I didn't write it. I just kept it in here. You know, potential candidates. And, and I'm just going to tell you this because this is the difference between carnal, natural thinking and godly thinking. And this is probably my greatest success ever in spiritual obedience. Came down to this. I'm like, I give up, Lord. I can't pick them right. So instead, you said, if I seek you first, your kingdom, your righteousness, be right with you, you will add all things to me. So if I'm supposed to have the right woman, you're going to have to find her and bring her to me. You said, I seek you, you add. So I want to see if you can add. I prayed that, and no sooner had I prayed that, then the next day I go to the gymnastics. I was on the ASU gymnastics team. I go to this class that I'm getting credit for. For This is kind of a funny thing, but they actually gave us credit, college credit, to be a teacher's assistant to the gymnastics classes. <laughs> and, uh, and so I go to class to, to be the TA, and this girl is hitting on me in the class. And flirt with me, and I'm like, okay. And she, and then, and, and I'm like, so do you want to go to lunch? No, 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 not today. She didn't say not never. She went not today. I'm like, okay. Next day she's flirting again. It seems like she's making hints. And then finally she says, you know, I got a question for you. If we are dating, and I said I didn't want to have sex until we were married, would would that make you say like forget it, it's over, or? Like, I just want to see what, what your opinion is. <laughs> I'm thinking, is this a rigged question? You know, I have to be really careful here. <laughs> but I'm a Christian, and I'm like, look, I'm a Christian, and my answer is, I, I don't believe you're supposed to do it. I mean, even though I used to think you should do it, I don't think you really should, because I think it just leads to more messed up people than it leads to blessings. And so I'd say no. She goes, oh, that's perfect. I got a roommate named Janet, and she is really like you. And, I mean, she's not weird or anything. She just doesn't go out, but she's waiting for the right one, and I think you should take her out. Her name was Rondi, and she, and she introduced me to her roommate right there. I says, I, I got one for you. Would you take her on a blind date for me? This is the girl who's been flirting with me all the time, <laughs> saying, well, I take her, and if it doesn't work out, I'll be there. Can't hurt. My picker's broken anyway. And then I meet Jan, and I'm like, okay. Lord, how do I? And I still got my mental list. I still got all the girls that are, you know, flirting with me. And I'm like, okay. And then I, I'm, I'm going, God, I want to, if I'm going to make this one right, if, if I mess up a decision in life, let it be the color of car I buy. You know, you can trade those in or repaint them. But don't let it be the woman that I marry. God, this is the one I want to do right. This one, I, I, I've seen that besides accepting Jesus into your life, who you marry is going to be the second most impacting decision of your entire life. If you don't believe that, you are in the natural mind and stupid. And you need to be born again. 
so you will hear the wisdom of this because this really is true wisdom. Who you marry, after you give your life to Christ, first most important decision, how much impact does that have on everything that goes on in our lives? Huge. So, I'm reading this book full of wisdom. It's found in the Bible called Proverbs. Some of you have heard of it. Turn to Proverbs 31. I'm going to end with this. This is how I figured out which one with spiritual thinking, not with carnal thinking, spiritual thinking, would be the right one of my mental list. I'm going to prioritize according to, I'm going to use a, a godly checklist to, you know, put each girl at the rung of the ladder of, you know, best candidate on down to, to all, all, only the top ten. I'm not messing with, I don't need to waste my time. Let's just do the top ten. So I get my mental list and I start reading this. And guys, if you're thinking about a future bride, you want to read this very carefully and see if the girl can go through this proverb with you. Because this is what I did. I read and I says, The words of King Lemuel, Proverbs 31, verse 1, The oracle which his mother taught him. This is a mom teaching his son something. Boys, listen up. Mom's going to teach you now. And what does she say? She says, what, O oh my son? What, O oh son of my womb? What, O oh son of my vows? He sa she says, do not give your strength to a woman or your ways to that which destroys kings. It's not for kings, O Lemuel, to drink wine or, to, or, 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 to, or, or for rulers to desire strong drink. For they will drink and forget what they've decreed and they will pervert the rights of the afflicted. It says, give the strong drink to him who's perishing, right? The one who's suffering. And the wine to him whose life is bitter. But not to the one, not, you know, th th that is okay. This is not for them. And then she goes on and she says, I'll just to speed this up, go to verse 10. She says, and an excellent wife, who can find? For her worth is far above jewels. By the way, guys, how valuable are our wives? way more valuable than any jewels. And it says here, the heart of her husband trusts in her, and in her he'll have no lack of gain. Okay. First tidbit. Got to make sure your heart can trust her. And in her you will have no lack of gain. That means, do you have to worry about if she has the checkbook? Or if she's going to go shopping with your money? <laughs> right away on my list, I'm like, ching, 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 ching. A bunch of girls like went doom, 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 down. And I was thinking, I met that one girl, Janet. She was like, seemed like her character was different than the other one. And hers goes, ching, 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 ching. You know, and the list is re just, just from the very first one. I mean, there was a few girls on my list. I hate to say this, but they were really hot. But I am sure I could not have trusted them. It's just, the, I mean, hot and trustable don't always go together. So I was like, uh, nope. And then it says, she does him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She looks, it says, for wool and flax and works with her hands in delight. She's like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar and she rises up also while it's still night and gives food to her household and portions to her ma maidens. She considers a field and she buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard, and she girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good, and her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor. She stretches out her hands to those that are needy. And I was like, um, okay, let's just break this down. She works with her hands, she rises and looks out after others, her household, her maidens. She, she considers, she's, in, she's industrious. By the way, is a godly woman not allowed to have a brain in her head and, and consider an investment or start a business or do, I mean, this woman is, is doing a business and making a buck and being able to reinvest it and get in a vineyard and she's, she's we would say this is a, this is a gal that's got it going. And she's yet so compassionate. She stretches out her hands to those in need. Well, 
my list just thinned by the time I got through this portion because I had a lot of girls on my list and my mental list. I couldn't even picture them lifting a hand to help someone else. There was all about them. And I mean, I had them on the list because I thought they were hot. But then I realized they were kind of shallow. You know, when you look for these kind of qualities, that they're industrious and they can do things and they help others. Verse 21, she's not afraid for the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits amongst the elders of the land. And she makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her. Husband's also saying, her husband says, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be what? She shall be praised. Give her the product of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. By the way, some Christians ask me, uh, you know, is it okay for the wife to, to be in an enterprise, to make, you know, maybe she's got a, wants to, to make something and sell it and do that. And, and, and what if she becomes successful? You know what my answer is? Right here. Give her the product of her hands. She worked, she got it, let her have it. Can you trust her? If you can't trust her, why'd you marry her? To the, now this is spiritual words and spiritual thoughts for a spiritual union between a husband and wife. And if you want to do it right, this, this, this is how I got Jan. Honestly, it was because of the words in this proverb I went, Let's weigh them all out according to this and see which one seems like how God would pick them, not how, I, not how Izzy would pick them. My list was wrong until I read this and I reprioritized. I re and then I looked back at this and I went, wow, here's Jan, slot number one. Slot two, three, or four are empty. I couldn't even pick a girl to put that close. Like slot five, six, seven, maybes, but pretty weak. You know, I was stretching then. I was realizing there's only one clear choice. The one that fits this, that's the one. And you say, was it worth it? Yes. Guys, if you're going to screw up, get the wrong color car. Do not get the wrong gal. Here's the wisdom right here. Spiritual assessment of the gal you want to make sure can you trust her with your whole heart can you trust her with your finances can you wake up every day and say you are awesome can you because it says the husband rises daily and he praises her you say well i don't want to get up every day and tell her she's great <laughs> then you didn't find the right model yet because when you get the right model seriously when you get the right model Duh. It's not that hard. Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. I mean, that's a pretty big compliment. That's a, I mean, it's broad. You can cover, you can use that all over the place. Honey, you're so good at this. Oh, you're good at that too. Oh, you are so good at... My wife is great at so many things. It's not hard to get up every day and say, great job. But are we supposed to do this wisdom? Like, guys, would this be to our good if we would follow these words? You know, they, you can pay me if you want for this seminar. We'll call it marriage enrichment. I'm going to charge today. It's going to cost you like 10 grand a piece because this is like choice, juicy stuff here. <laughs> this is the, what we call marriage saving from the rocks kind of wisdom. Because I get this all the time. Guys come to me when it's already hit the fan. And they're like, I don't know what I could do to recover. When's the last time you woke up and praised your wife? When did you get up and say, great job, honey. You're so good at this, or you're so good at that, or you've done such a wonderful job at this. Gals, how does it feel to have someone say something like that to you? Your own husband. I mean, is that a good feeling? 
Are the husbands supposed to do this? According to this right here. See, because everyone reads Proverbs 31 as to what the gal is supposed to do. The Proverbs 31 woman. I submit to you they should retitle this the Proverbs 31 man. Because there's, there's a whole bunch more instruction to us guys what we're supposed to do in this than to the gals. We got to get up, praise them. We got to give them the product of their, of their hands. We, it says she supplies linen garments to the tradesmen. We, you know, some guys won't let their wives do stuff. They're like, no, can't do it. She's like, but I make really good lily koi jam and I'm sure I could sell it. Nope. I'll be intimidated by your profit. Dude, suck it up. You're supposed to be the man here. Proverbs 31 man lets her do these things. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 31 man is known amongst the gates of the elders. He sits there. That's the He's not a schmuck. He's upstanding in his community. So she can if she's going to be the Proverbs 31 woman, he's got to he's got to step up and be the the upright guy. So she can become and blossom into what God desires for her life. But guys, don't think we get out of doing nothing here. Maybe go home and read for extra credit. I only gave you like five of the things of the man. There's like 12 minimum. I give this for marriage enrichment assignment. Guys, go find the 12 things the guys have to do in this chapter. Because they're so quick. They'll come to class. We're going to do Proverbs 31 for your marriage... Uh, Marital crisis counseling. Oh, good. Tell her what she's supposed to do, Pastor. I was thinking we're going to work on you first. What do you mean? Yeah, go read it and find all the stuff the men have to do. Because once the men finally do what they're supposed to do, it's really easy for the women to blossom into the women they're supposed to be because the man is giving them what they're supposed to be given to their wives for the support. But by the way, everything I'm telling you right now is all spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. And to the unspiritual person, they're just going to go, Phew. I don't get it, man. You mean I'm supposed to find a chick I trust? I just want to bet her. I know how guys think in the natural mind. Like base, base thinking, like an animal. In heat. That's it. That's all they got. I'm talking about a successful relationship that you can step back and do like Barry and say, 33 years coming up. 31 for me and Jan. There, there, this wisdom works if you do it. And it makes it even better because as you go along, you get better at it. And the better you get at it, the more fun it is. Isn't it? Right, Val? Does this work? This is the stuff that when people say, well, if I could just get one like you got, then use this wisdom to pick and see what you get. Okay, don't use natural wisdom. Use spiritual wisdom from above. And I guarantee God has a much bigger, broader plan, more things you could even think or imagine. Amen? Amen. That's all I have for you today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray as we go from here, these words could sink deep into the hearts of each person, the listeners. Lord, whether they be here with us on the beach or just later on the radio or the internet, I pray that you would let your, your spiritual wisdom, your spiritual thoughts, your spiritual words sink down deep into our spirits. That we could choose to follow you and your ways. Or that we could seek you, your kingdom first, your righteousness, and have you add everything that you want to add to us. I pray that for each person here in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand with me? We'll sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.